specialists through which we can um, organize the uh, modeling. And um, so with all of that, we are really um, combining the technical with the creation of a, a community. And that community is um, taking uh, decisions in each particular uh, context where the uh, community needs to answer two uh, critical questions that data should be as open as possible, but also as closed as necessary. And what that means will differ uh, in each substance community. It's different if you answer that question for uh, in a medical context or uh, in, um, in, in, in another uh, domain uh, context. And also it's different whether you ask this question in uh, this place or in that place, because uh, there are different cultures around what is uh, possible and right according uh, to that particular environment in terms of how uh, data can be used and, and should be used. So this has to be contextualized. And again, for everybody, it means that the data will be distributed, but they will be as dis distributed as possible and as centralized as necessary. So in the end, you can actually uh, uh, see the Internet of Fair Data and Services as a connection of um, all kinds of places uh, where data uh, are held, including uh, perhaps even uh, our phone. Uh, and so this is again a spectrum of uh, distribution and, and centralization where uh, as a community, decisions need to be made in terms of what is uh, the best, um, uh, the best um, uh, uh, balance between distribution and centralization of the data. Going then to the next slide. So here you see uh, the two um, uh, elements coming together. On the uh, left hand side you see the work in the, in the hospital, the data entry, uh, putting them into the uh, appropriate forms, the data storage, which is still in the hospital. And then you see the work of the data steward, uh, where uh, through the data modeling on the one hand and uh, through the uh, definition of the me metadata, the data are prepared to relate to the FAIR data point. Again, to emphasize the data are not moved. The data remain where they are, but the fair data, um, the fair data point will um, uh, be the central uh, place where the metadata relate to, where the, therefore the metadata about the existence of the data can be found. And kind of a minimum uh, proposition could be that you have data, you don't want these data to be uh, uh, accessible uh, uh, under any uh, uh, condition for uh, direct um, machine readability, but on the metadata there is a phone number of a particular um, desk in the hospital where uh, permission can be asked to enter the data. So by a way of illustrating that putting up the metadata does not give you uh, uh, direct accessibility. Every level of closure of the data is still possible within the publication of the metadata. The only thing that the metadata does is that it announces that the data are there. And so the underlying levels of accessibility, they need to be defined. And that is part of the process of building the community and where the training is essential, taking ourselves through the training we are meeting those questions and then have to uh, engage within our um, community to uh, give some of the answers. Then quickly go to the next uh, and then uh, we should really open up for questions. Here you see uh, at the bottom, you see the um, uh, records of the patient uh, data, uh, the process uh, of uh, verification then uh, makes them in principle possible for machine readability. They are stored. You see the, uh, the, the places of storage there. And then these are announced through the metadata in the fair data uh, point. And depending on the accessibility that is given within the metadata, the machine knows 
uh, whether it can visit uh, the data and what the conditions are. And so through the algorithm, algorithm, uh, this process uh, is then um, automatized, which uh, makes it very important that the uh, uh, algorithms are audited and can be uh, trusted. So going to the next slide then, uh, yeah, clearly there is no uh, fair data point without machine uh, actionable metadata. So the uh, metadata are really the core of a fair data point and the fair data points are the hubs from which the Internet of Fair Data and Services is um, being constructed. Then go on to the next. Um, so um, this is again to emphasize that the uh, job that we are working on is really at the core of uh, building this uh, COVID-19 relevant uh, internet of uh, fair data uh, and then the tooling in the services uh, where the domain experts and the meta data experts together uh, are able to create machine actionable metadata that are in compliance and relevant to uh, the context where uh, this community uh, is located. Then going to the next. So these are some of the uh, critical questions that we will need to go to. And so within the training, that is what we um, are uh, really going to do in the uh, machine for metadata, metadata for machine, sorry, metadata for machine uh, workshops and bear uh, these questions in a um, uh, in a logical way need to be uh, addressed and uh, uh, given an answer to and from there then we can uh, we can uh, construct the fair data point to go on to the next so then uh, to summarize um, the aim of uh, the work here is uh, to make data available such an important uh, resource, resource that doesn't mean that they are open. Uh, personal data should always be protected and, and uh, I think basically under every uh, circumstance. Uh, however, um, the interoperability is possible uh, also when we uh, protect personal data um, but how we make the data interoperable uh, depends on how we embed uh, this in local regulatory frameworks, local also meaning national, depending on uh, the level and the context in which we are working. Uh, then uh, we need to maximize the freedom, freedom uh, to operate um, so that means that really our work needs to be additional to the work that is already being implemented in the hospitals and the clinics and it should not uh, add uh, other uh, pressures. And uh, we want therefore to use the data recordings that are in place in the medical facilities but make them relevant to our COVID-19 uh, context. Um, we will be always building on any tools anywhere already available that uh, contribute uh, to what we are doing. So never reinvent the wheel is really an important principle. Ensuring transparency, transparency and uh, auditing of the algorithmic tools uh, is uh, very important because all of this uh, has an uh, important element in that we really need to be able to trust the operations that are going to take uh, place. Uh, and from there, well, creativity can come in. So many new uh, tools can be developed uh, and they can be uh, appropriate uh, to location and to purpose. And the last uh, principle is that we need to always be uh, very um, uh, careful to make sure that any uh, assertions that may come out uh, are triangulated and that we trust uh, the experts uh, in the field uh, and make sure that uh, that involvement is uh, always there to um, put the um, conclusions that may uh, come from 
the data analy analytics to put them to the test and really not to jump to conclusions too fast. Already we are seeing too much of that uh, uh, in the current uh, time coming from very uh, high levels. So from science, we need to really make sure that that step of triangulation is um, also a part of our way of working. So with that, um, Christine, uh, going to the last slide, I think um, this is how you can uh, reach all of us. The coordinator is Francisca, she's here in this uh, call. She's based at Kampala International University. The technical support group is led by Marianne Basaja. She's a PhD student on this topic. Uh, at Leiden University, also associated with Kampala International University. And um, our ambassadors of um, uh, Go Fair is led by another student uh, of ours, uh, Alia, who is based in Kazakhstan and was one of the first to uh, establish a fair data point, uh, which was not publish, published, but uh, which was very well done. And then we should also thank the Go Fair International Support and Coordination Office. Uh, they have a fantastic team and Eric Schultes is also available all the time uh, for any one of us to um, advise and to make sure that we uh, know the best way forward and that uh, our, uh, all our efforts are very well coordinated. So I also wanted to thank him here. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a, a wonderful presentation. I found myself uh, uh, taking a lot of notes with thoughts. Um, so anyway, it was, uh, Hopefully I wasn't slow to advance your slides. There were so many thought-provoking things that I had to remember I was moderating. I'm not getting badly. <clears throat> so um, while people are formulating their questions, I wanted to uh, uh, give you a couple uh, things to think about. Uh, next week, again, we have uh, same, same time. It'll be Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, which I believe is 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Um, there's a link here for joining Vodan. Uh, these slides will be posted on the website where you registered. Um, there's also this uh, welcome for the training of trainers. Um, there's a, uh, as part of the uh, four data, uh, which joins, um, oh, I'm sorry, we've got another participant coming in, which joins CoData, GoFair, RDA, and WDS. Um, uh, VODAN and RDA COVID-19 working groups have a partnership, so this is how to get involved in the more uh, policy aspect. Uh, and I wanted to highlight um, a new resource that we haven't talked about yet. This one comes from the curated list at the westbigdatahub.org, which um, uh, Melissa, uh, Alyssa, and I are all a part of, and that's the uh, Data Science COVID-19 resources, which is at academic academicdatascience.org slash COVID, and we do have a Slack channel. Um, if that is your um, preferred method of, of engaging, that's at gofair.slack.com. So with that, uh, let's, uh, well, one, thank you so much, Mirjam, and uh, we can open it up for questions. Hello, can I ask a question? Oh, good morning, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Atinkut. I'm uh, attending from Germany, uh, from the University of Greifswald. Uh, I just have some questions uh, on uh, the presentation. First, I would like to thank the presenter. It was a really wonderful presentation. And we are recently involving uh, on fair data principle, medical, mainly on medical domains. And I just have one question, I could say two questions. The first one is, uh, can you a, a bit elaborate uh, what exactly do you mean human and machine readable data? Just to give, uh, you can give us some examples so that we can precisely understand those concepts. And the other thing is, um, you have already said uh, quality data is important uh, for verification and other processes. So can you explain a bit on the interdependency between data quality and FAIR principle, exactly what is the impact of one over the other. Thank you. 
Shall I take questions one by one, or do you want to take more questions oh. first? Oh, Mirza, uh, please go ahead if you want to speak to Atinkud, and if, apologies for mispronouncing your name, um, his uh, questions, you know, what do you mean by machine-readable data, and then the relationship of data quality to FAIR data? Yes. So, um, machine-readable data, data in, in, in RDF, in a, in a form that can be uh, found and handled by the uh, machine, the, um, the metadata affair, um, uh, the Internet of Fair Data and Services also remains uh, an, an important, um, requires uh, that uh, it's also uh, understood and accessible through uh, uh, human processes. So we really have both uh, a coded part and a, a human readable part in the uh, metadata. And they are two uh, um, uh, parts of the same uh, coin in the context of the metadata. And the quality data, the way in which I see it, but I think that this, this is something that, that perhaps uh, is a discussion. Um, for me, when I use uh, this term quality data, um, then uh, these are data that um, can be engaged in such a way that we can understand where they are coming from. And so quality data to me are data where uh, once we do the data analytics and there are certain things that we find, we're able to trace them back to uh, their origin and we can engage whoever uh, related to that uh, context. Uh, we can engage uh, uh, colleagues in the understanding of those data. And, and, and this is um, something that um, uh, I think the um, uh, FAIR data really uh, provide for. And that also uh, means that the um, elements that allow uh, specific variables that, that may differ between uh, contexts that we can um, engage those more in the context of uh, our work. So in my view, the localization of data, the distribution of data contributes to the quality of data. That is uh, the way in which uh, I intended that. But thank you for that question. It's a very good question. And, and perhaps uh, you or others have a different view and, and I would be also happy to hear that. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise I have a few of my own. I have a question. Oh, please. Um, my name is Esther Ta I um, also I am a PhD student at the University of Greifswald in Germany. Um, my question is: There are a few countries that have been chosen to to pioneer the setup of fair data points. Um, if I understood correctly, my question is: Why were these particular countries chosen? Was there already a favorable underlying infrastructure? or what, what, what was it? <laughs> That's a really nice question, uh, Esther. Um, I think that the choice um, really also shows how all of this um, is a um, social process. It just uh, is the case that uh, we had already done quite a lot of uh, work within the context uh, of these countries. Um, we are lucky because we have Mariam Basaja, who is also in this call, uh, as a PhD uh, student on this project. So it just really allowed us to move ahead uh, fast because the, the relationships were very good. We had a very good working relationship with the hospital, with the uh, Ministry of Health and so on. And that's really what you need in order to uh, advance. But um, I mentioned those countries because I wanted to be clear where uh, in the first instance uh, we are uh, focusing, but we think that we will have the fair data point uh, ready in the, in the next uh, weeks and we are already looking at uh, expanding and involving uh, others. So this is not at all closed and uh, you're really, really very welcome and that's also why I was really happy that uh, I was um, 
uh, invited to give this uh, talk. The more we are, the better. One thing is that um, I can say, and, and people from our network on the call, they, uh, they, they will confirm that, is that we are taking ourselves through this process step by step. It's also a, discover, a discovery because we have very uh, many different disciplines that need to come together. So what we hope we'll be achieving in the next um, weeks and months is that we are getting much more packages in, in a box. So that in a way I could just uh, send you the specifications for a fair data point and, and, and almost um, without uh, too much uh, training, you can uh, take yourself uh, through it. Um, in the context of our uh, project, we also felt, and again, this is based on the um, uh, my my personal experience in relation to the Ebola crisis, but also uh, based on some um, uh, research that we had done, is that there really is a need to uh, strengthen the capacities because you can put up an infrastructure, but without the data stewards it is not going to be that meaningful. So again, the development here needs to go hand in hand with understanding from the administrative level what we're trying to do and that the accessibility really is uh, something that needs to be uh, and, and has to be uh, contextualized. But on the other hand, that uh, we also do need to build the capacities and hence we're working so closely with our sister universities to make sure that we have the data stewards. And actually that is the case everywhere. That is as much the case in the Netherlands or Germany or Belgium as it is the case in, uh, in uh, Uganda or Ethiopia. But um, we published two articles um, and um, well, Christine was, was one of the authors uh, and Mariam did a lot of the groundwork for that. And what we found was that the uptake of uh, FAIR data implementation was very fast in the last uh, three years, but it was very much concentrated to uh, two particular regions, uh, Europe and the United States. And it was also very much concentrated in uh, one domain, and that was the domain of the life sciences. So that was something that worried us because we thought that for even for the life sciences, if you have a whole continent uh, not included in these data, it is actually going to be uh, affecting, and then I'm going to use that word again, the quality of the data, because we need to have the diversity in order to uh, really know what our data represent when we do our research. So that background of the research that we did on implementation and the, the um, identifying the weaknesses in that also informed our a determination to make sure that um, we would do everything possible to uh, engage uh, our African colleagues in the establishment of the uh, fair data points. Mirjam, I was wondering if I could ask you how you came to um, be involved in, in uh, your work in Africa. I know we heard last week from Baron Mons who um, his own research had been on malaria and he had spent a lot of time in Africa and and that was how he found his way to some of his interests and in doing things differently with data as you describe um, leaving the data in Africa and have it owned locally where it was produced but uh, I wonder if you could comment a bit more on on how you how you came to this area of research mm. thank you that's a really nice question I, I, I actually got involved because um, I had been working uh, on uh, Europe uh, international relations and, and, and Europe-Africa relations for a really long time. But um, by around uh, 2009, um, I was um, uh, working uh, in, the, uh, in relation to the Horn of Africa and I was being uh, alerted of a very particular uh, problem which had everything to do with um, uh, a new form of uh, human trafficking, which was uh, completely uh, driven on the use of um, mobile phones, which had then just been introduced. 
And um, well, we ended up, to, the, it's too long a story to go into detail, but we ended up doing quite a lot of uh, research on that. And so what um, I realized from that is that um, innovation, is, innovation is good. Uh, very often we think of innovation uh, being good per se, but I learned from that um, experience, and, and which was quite uh, a, a difficult experience, I realized that really innovation is context specific and whether or not it is good really depends on that particular situation and, and you can't avoid that. And so I became very interested in that relationship between digital innovation and uh, context. And that is why, well, um, going back to that earlier question on quality data, quality data, it, it has to be determined in terms of the meaning that can be given within the context of where they were produced or where they are supposed to have meaning. And that doesn't take away the need for interoperability because, uh, um, well, we, we have become a very small world and COVID-19 makes that so clear. So we are really looking for a balance in, in, in which we are trying to, um, uh, well, we are looking for a way in which we can balance on the one hand, disconnected worlds, and on the other hand, the fact that this uh, always um, is translated in a specific way in a particular uh, context and it's that awareness that um, I think is so critical and and um, so when I was um, introduced by Barrand in 2016 to uh, FAIR and I was already working on data science but I was quite uh, concerned and quite worried about the way in which the, the power of data um, can be such an important tool but what is not in the data is just as important. And so that awareness of what we know within the data and what we don't know within the data is just so important for us as scientists to understand what these data represent. And so therefore I was really taken by the fact that a fair data point can be as small as a very small uh, clinic uh, somewhere in the north uh, of Uganda, in Kitgum or Lira, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It, there where these uh, uh, data are available and there's somebody who's interested in making them, them operable, interoperable, uh, this can connect and can then link us back to that specific uh, reality. And so that is why I myself, I became an ambassador of FAIR because I felt it deals with critical issues. And then um, again, I was just really so shocked with, um, I mean, what happened in the context of um, Liberia was that we were having a meeting with our um, research group and the one uh, uh, administrator of the, the, the critical public hospital in uh, Liberia happened to be at that meeting and he got, um, a message on his phone of the first Ebola patient. And we were in this meeting sitting in Tilburg and we were saying, you know, you need to go home. And so that night he went home. And then it took us about six months for the international um, community to, to respond. And then so much um, uh, knowledge and um, um, capacity uh, was brought in and that was a good thing. But then when this was over, nothing remained, not even the data. And uh, that just to me made no sense. So I, I really felt we have to do this uh, different and we have to do this, uh, this differently. But that means that the, the question of ownership is really very, very critical. And it can never be just a technical project. It always has to be a technical project and a political project, and a social project, and a knowledge project, and all of that needs to come together. And that is, I think, why training of trainers is really vital, because by doing that, we take ourselves through 
the learning question where everyone in our own experience and discipline comes together to uh, add weight to what are really the priorities within a given community and defined by that given community. Thank you, I'm so glad I asked. I wanted to, if I may ask one last question before we close this out. I uh, want a comment to let you know that we have, in addition to um, uh, uh, people representing uh, fair data stewards and people who would like to contribute around the globe, in the U.S., we have participants from our National Institutes of Health. We have people who have their own consulting practices, people from uh, research libraries, and they have all been interested in advancing capacity of FAIR in the U.S., including um, creating training materials and helping where they can. They are also good resources for connecting and others who are ready to help. So my question to you, Marjem, is, how can we help, especially knowing that some of these materials that are needed for um, uh, Vodan Africa could be reused here in the U.S.? So help us know how to plug in. Yeah, certainly. I think because many of the tools that we, um, that we are working on, they can really be shared as long as the respect is there that everybody needs to kind of tailor that to their own uh, purpose within the community as they have uh, defined it. Uh, we need to really uh, make those tools and uh, we also should not uh, remake tools that already exist. So I would really be very grateful uh, for our community to connect to your community in the United States uh, as we are also uh, connecting to the European community and, and to um, those that have already started in, uh, in Asia and Latin America. Um, so definitely, so whether this is on communication, whether this is on training manuals, whether this is on kind of packing uh, the technical aspects into uh, ways that become more accessible for data stewards uh, to then take that forward. All of that will be really, really very welcome. And, and it's necessary. I mean, we don't know what, uh, what the situ situation is going to be, but we are really very worried on uh, if the COVID-19 uh, epidemic um, would uh, really uh, become anything as big as it is now, unfortunately, in the, in the US and in Europe, um, it will be a real challenge uh, if, 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 if it would take those forms uh, on the African continent where people are often living in such closed uh, areas and, and on top of each other and so on. So, yeah, we really, we really need that kind of a support and, and, and thank you for offering that. Sure, so hopefully um, those of you who saw the website where you registered, there is a link to Vote in Africa. There it has already a repository of training materials. Everything they've produced is there. There's also um, uh, the Open Science Framework uh, website has some of these other materials if you join uh, Vote in Africa. And there's a very vibrant group on WhatsApp if you uh, really yes. want to be plugged in and discussing things blow by blow. Sorry, I'm using uh, idioms. Uh, as they occur, um, that's another great place. And so if uh, all else fails, please uh, get in touch with us and we will make sure you're connected in. Marjam, thank you so much for this very interesting, appreciated uh, uh, talk. I look forward to the day when we can be together again in the same room. But until then, this was quite wonderful. And thank you, everyone, for your time and attention. We will post this uh, very soon to the website. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.